now let, let us say I am interested in three sections one is a channel section the other one is an analyst cylinder and the next section that I am interested is in this analyst cylinder with a cut in between with a cut here there is a cut there okay there is a longitudinal cut that is it is something like this it is some tube bent like this okay where there is this cut along the axis of the member okay. So, that is the last one okay now let us assume that the channel has the following dimensions the thickness of the flange is T thickness of flange is T the width of the flange is B both top and bottom and the depth of the web is H with the thickness T again okay. Now, in order to analyze it in one of the forms that we have seen till now this is an open section again because there is no continuous flow of shear stresses the shear stress flow in this case has to be something like this I will exaggerate the figure okay the shear stress flow in this case due to torsion would be something like this would be something like that. So, what I can do is I open this section up and consider it as an equivalent rectangular section this is a simplified analysis not an exact analysis, but a simplified analysis which will give you a quick estimate of what is the maximum stress that this section will see for a given torque and what is the angle of twist that this section will see for a given torque okay. So, what I do is I open this up and think of it as being a rectangular section of thickness T of thickness T and of depth 2 B plus H okay that is I open the two flanges to become straight and I am thinking of it as an equal and rectangular section of this dimensions. So, now the torque for this section would be 1 by 3 mu omega the depth is 2 b plus h and t cube is the width of the cross section. So, that will be the torque relating to the angle of twist per unit length omega and tau max would be 3 times t divided by 2 b plus h into t square ok. So, that will be your tau max for this. Similarly, the final figure here the figure 3 for this also is an open section okay, and it will warp because there is no continuous flow of shear stress is possible here. In this case the shear flow would be something like this because there is a cut there the shear stress cannot be continuous in the cross section there will be a shear flow something like this and the ends this also will open it up and think of it as being a rectangular section this will think of it as being a rectangular section of thickness T if this initial thickness was T and if its mean radius from the center was R m this will have a thickness T and the depth of this rectangular section will be 2 pi 
R m. Okay. Okay. In this case, in figure three case, the torque could be for this case similar to here. The torque could be one by three mu omega two pi R m into T cube. Okay. And tau max would be three times torque divided by two pi R m T square. Okay. Note in all this approximations, the thickness is the thickness over which the liver arm of the shear stress acts. Okay, that is the thickness. Okay, it is not because it is thin in that dimension. The shear flow is such that it will it is it will go around in the thinner dimension, but not always. Okay, in all this, if I open it up, the thickness is. Where the shear stress changes its direction, this liver arm between the shear stresses is what is the thickness of the cross section. Okay, so even here the shear flow is something like this. If I open it up, and the liver arm between the shear stresses is the thickness of the cross section. Okay, that's why I have to judge which is the thickness and which is the depth of the cross section. Okay, now coming to the Unless cylinder here, we saw in the last class that it is a closed section, and we saw that the torque is related to uh, the angle of twist by the expression mu j was pi by two r naught power four minus r i power four, right? Okay. So now that is the expression for the torque there. Okay, and in this case. The shear stress will won't go around inside the cross section. On the other hand, it will be something like this. At every section, there will be a shear stress. There is no point where there will be zero shear stress in this cross section. Okay, there will be all increasing shear stress as you go radially outside from there, because tau is given by T by J into R. Okay, where R is a radial distance from the center of the cross section, from the CG of the cross section. Okay, now let's simplify this. This will be mu omega by two pi into r naught square plus r i square into r naught plus r i into t. Right? I have used a square minus b square is a minus b into a plus b formula twice, and I got that expression. Expression in here. Okay, now if the cross section is such that R naught and R I are close to each other, and if the thickness of the cross section is small, then I can replace this with R M, the mean radius, two times R M, and this I can replace with two times R M square. Okay, then this expression for torque reduces to mu omega two pi R M. Cube into t. Okay, one two cancel. This two and this two cancel. So I am left with two pi r m cube by t. Okay. Now, similarly, tau max in this case is given by t by j into r max, which is t by pi two pi. R naught power four minus R I power four into R naught. Okay, now this again I'll simplify like what I did before to get two times T. This will become R M divided by pi two times R M square into two times R M into T. Okay, so this will be T divided by Two pi r m square into t. Okay, r m square into t. Okay. Now let's compare what happens when you introduce a longitudinal slit in this unless cylinder. That is, you got these expressions when you introduce a unless slit. You got these expressions when you introduce a unless slit. It's a small slit. 
just the axa blade uh, uh, slit into the uh, cross section uh, depth ok, but the shear flow changes and hence you have such a reduction in the torque required to induce a given angle of twist ok. Now, let us say this is with the slit this is handle cylinder A C, A C and this with the slit ok. Now, let us take the ratio of T handle cylinder divided by T the torque required for engineering a given angle of twist with the slit ok. What will this be? That will be the ratio of these two that will be the ratio of this ok. So, that will I'll give us 3 times R m by T the whole square ok. So, R m by T is greater than 1 significantly greater than 1. So, you can see that the analog cylinder torque to engineer a given angle of twist is much greater than this implies angle of twist for a given angle of twist the torque required for angular cylinder is much greater than the torque required for a split cylinder ok. So, this is because the lever arm changes for the torque to be generated. In one case it is the entire cross section lever arm plays in other one it is only the thickness of the cross section plays the role of the lever arm ok. Similarly, for completeness let us do tau max of angular cylinder divided by tau max of split cylinder ok. This will be nothing but uh, 1 by 3 T by R m is much less than 1. So, this will be much less than 1 which means for a given torque the stress developed in the analog cylinder is much less compared to the stress developed in the split cylinder ok which is re recognizable because it is going to deform more for a given torque it will develop more stresses because of that the split cylinder ok.